We live in a time when the miracles of modern science make it possible to keep someone alive long after their heart has stopped beating by virtue of machines that will help their heart to beat and pump oxygen into their lungs. Judaism is a religion that celebrates life, especially life on this earth, even more so than in the world to come. In Deuteronomy, Moses exhorts the Jewish people at the end of his life to choose life, ubacharta b'chayim. In the context of end-of-life decisions, does the decision to prolong life, the desire to prolong life, as was the case for Moses, is that the only Jewish value that can be at play, or might there be other values that can inform our decisions at such a time? In the well-known verse in Ecclesiastes, a time to live and a time to die, contemporary scholars of Responsa have looked at this particular verse and have concluded that what the verse actually is trying to teach us is that there is a time in which we should pray for someone's full recovery. But when it seems that a person is going to die, that there is no hope for them to recover, that we should die for God's mercy and compassion to help that person die. While it is strictly forbidden to do anything proactive to hasten the end of life, it is permissible to remove impediments from keeping a person from dying. In the Middle Ages, uh, there was a belief that the repetitive sound of a woodpecker pecking or of putting salt on a person's tongue would impede death. And one of the great works of that time, Sefer HaChasidim, ruled that one could remove the salt from the person's tongue, or in some way get the woodpecker to stop pecking, in order to make it possible for the person to die, and that the importance of having compassion and mercy at this point of life was more important than longevity. As we readily know in this day and age, there are many, many rabbinic rulings, even within each movement, about what it means to remove an impediment um, from keeping someone from dying. Uh, and this is particularly the case around medicines and nutrition. Jewish law and tradition can help guide us and inform us in making our own decisions about what is right for each one of us. For the 20th century, we have really been focused on maximizing longevity. But in recent years, choosing life has come to mean that one chooses quality of life and that that is as important as quantity of life. So when families come to us with this important decision of trying to weigh their values, we must listen carefully and closely to what their values and concerns are, and when possible, speak to or find out the wishes of the person who is dying. The importance of advanced care planning and of a living will is really evident at a time like this where there is ambiguity to help a family and the person who's dying make a decision that works well for them. For some people, this will mean maximizing their longevity. For others, it might mean uh, the importance of dying in a way where there is no pain. And for others, it could mean trying to remove any impediments from dying if they are in a vegetative state. These end-of-life decisions are incredibly complicated. There are many competing Jewish values at stake here. Compassion, freedom of choice, human dignity, um, and longevity. Choose life in the face of death means choosing an end of life that is coherent with the values that have guided a person throughout their life.